Good evening and welcome to the Channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. The former German Chancellor has defended her policy towards Russia prior to the February invasion of Ukraine, saying she had run out of power to influence Vladimir Putin. Angela Merkel said she had tried to convene European talks with the Russian president and French president Emmanuel Macron in the summer of 2021. More than five million pounds. Meanwhile, British Foreign Minister James Cleverley has praised the resilience of Ukrainians as he met his counterpart Dmitry Kaleba on a visit to Kyiv. It is clear that Vladimir Putin and Russia are trying to exploit the winter by continuing its brutal attacks on Ukraine's civilian infrastructure and energy infrastructure to uh, exacerbate the ongoing humanitarian crisis. But today, I saw the strength and the resilience and the perseverance of the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian government. And I am left with no doubt that the Ukrainians will continue with their steadfast defense of their homeland against this unprovoked aggression. So today I am announcing further funding to the Partnership Fund for Resilient Ukraine, which will support the Ukrainian government, local officials and Ukrainian communities to rebuild vital local infrastructure in cities, towns and villages that have been liberated from Russian occupation. Search and rescue teams have continued their efforts to clear debris and evacuate victims of a deadly earthquake that hit the Indonesian town of Sianja. The death toll has risen to 310, while 24 people remain missing. The quake on Monday was particularly deadly because it struck a densely populated area at a depth of just 10 kilometers. The Chinese-Canadian pop star Chris Wu has been jailed for 13 years after being found guilty of sex crimes. A court in Beijing convicted the 32-year-old singer and actor of raping three women. He was arrested last year after being accused of date rape by a student before 24 more victims spoke out. The court said he would be deported, although deportations in China usually take place after sentences are served. Congo's foreign minister has threatened insurgent groups with regional force unless they accept peace agreements. It comes after African leaders declared a ceasefire on Wednesday in Congo's east, which begins today. The agreement is aimed at stopping attacks by the M23 rebel group in eastern Congo. If there is a group that refuses, that doesn't take the hand, they're going to be considered negative and fought by the regional force. We forget that the regional force is not only for the M23, but for all the movements there. The former Pakistani Prime Minister has told supporters he would rejoin an anti-government march this weekend after he was shot in the shin earlier this month. Imran Khan spoke to his party via a video message and said he would march on the capital Islamabad and called on his supporters to join him in his campaign calling for early elections. The 70-year-old former cricket hero was wounded on the 3rd of November in the shooting at a rally, part of a rolling march that he has led to press for a general election since he was ousted in a parliament vote in April. And a video uploaded to social media shows Canadian police chasing down an escaped ostrich through the streets of Tabba in Alberta. Oh my gosh, this is the first time I've ever seen this. About 20 ostriches escaped their enclosure and created traffic hazards. According to local media, police captured the escaped birds by midday and gave them back to their owner. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel studios in Lagos.